Well, good afternoon and um, welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is ag finance. On today's call, we're joined by Jim O'Brien, CEO of Agrograph. Agrograph is building the credit score of agriculture. Much like uh, FICO reshapes the financial industry with its personal credit scores, Agrograph has standardized farm-to-farm -farm credit worthiness for the agricultural industry. The company is helping the industries that support farmers, crop insurers, ag lenders, and ag service providers. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors, and we have invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Agrograph's market. You're potential customers for Agrograph's products and services. You have built a company similar to Agrograph's or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities Agrograph may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to and then a few process comments while that poll is running. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help Agrograph find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You can ask, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Jim O'Brien, CEO of Agrograph. Jim, please free take it away. Thanks, David. And I appreciate everyone for, for joining uh, today's uh, webinar. And, and I'm glad to have the opportunity uh, to present to this uh, unique group of, of, of folks here. So what I'm going to do over the next 15 or so minutes is take folks through a little bit of a journey here. We'll, we'll of course, talk about Agrograph and how we got started and a little bit about what we do. Why, you know, who do we do it for? Why do we do it? You know, what problems uh, are, are we solving? And then we'll, we'll go into uh, a case study. And we'll, that case study will focus more on the, on the ag lending side of the house rather than maybe more of a crop insurance side, although we'll touch on that on several uh, instances uh, th throughout, throughout the deck here. So getting started, uh, Agrograph, we were founded in 2016. We had our first seed investment in 2018. And you may argue that was really when we kicked off the company officially. And we just recently closed another follow-on round of capital here in, in, in 2021. Our company is headquartered right in the Midwest here in Madison, Wisconsin. Our board of directors come from the ag industry, from either active or recently retired executives, folks at John Deere Equipment and John Deere Finance. Case New Holland, JP Morgan Chase and Banking, a Swiss Re reinsurer, and another company called Jamp was a sales executive there who was, they were acquired by Vista Equity Partners for several hundred million dollars. So, an invaluable group of, of board members that helped to guide Agrograph. Uh, and then, of course, our investors, uh, venture investors, the Idea Fund uh, and Mucker Capital, uh, extremely grateful for both uh, their investment in us, but also their, their time and talent. So, that's Agrograph. So what, what is Agrograph? Well, we're essentially a data platform that utilizes satellite imagery and remote sensing to create agricultural information at the field level. So we could tell you every field planted, every crop uh, everywhere in the world. And so we provide this, this granularity, but we're not a precision ag company, right? We're not selling data to farmers. We're not telling them how much seed to put down or fertilizer. And we're also not in the grain forecasting business, and I'll put an asterisk by that. You know, we're not trying to go out and, and outdo the USDA, although we can do the, the trend to do it before they do. But that's not really what our business is. What our business is, is with this field level granularity, it's really, you know, packaging this up into, into data solutions on a key handful of industries. And, you know, for us, you know, we're really focused on this niche of primarily risk management. And, you know, if you look at this crop insurance and ag lending, you can think about both industries are essentially risk management industries. And the type of solutions that Agrograph provides for them, you know, 
are things such as you know loss cost estimates and risk based pricing parametric right for insurance on the ag lending side of the house you know a risk score you know loan default prediction you know again a risk based pricing which we'll reference AVM like automated valuation model kind of think like Zillow and Zestimate how do we go go create a price for every house in your neighborhood whether it's for sale or not and then secondarily we also work in other areas of the ag industry from from land evaluation of you know real estate investment trust from ag technology and service companies and then we do do some work in grain primarily on the biofuel side you know looking at you know total acres estimate you know if you're an ethanol plant you now how much corn is is uh, is planted in your area and the likelihood you know those capacities translate into into bushels for your plant so what is this problem that we're solving? Why do you guys bother to, to, to be a company? And what we've really f- focused on as, as we've grown the company is determining this, this credit worthiness of the farm. Again, as, as, as David mentioned, you know, as when the FICO score came out, the Fair Isaac score, you know, it really revolutionized, you know, personal finance because they could put a, a standardized benchmark across, you know, any any individual that came in for, for a loan, you know, the bank could understand where their, their credit sits. There's no such thing in, in agriculture today. There really isn't. Uh, you know, there's this financial analysis side of the house, which the banks or crop insurers or, you know, you know, John Deere Finance says, hey, you know, I'm going to look at your last couple years of your, your book of business. But they, they really don't have the ability to understand the other side of the house, which is the farm, right? They do the financial analysis of the farmer, but when it comes to the farm, they have them fill out a form and say, how many acres do you farm? What crops do you plant? What's your APH, right? And it's, it, it ends there. And what, what happens is, you know, if, if you were to look, you know, at a bank and a crop insurer, and from our standpoint, they're both looking at, you know, wrapping, the bank wants to calculate the, the proper interest rate for the loan. And the crop insurer is looking, you know, the proper cost of coverage, right? What's the likelihood of you filing a claim? And then for the bank, what's the likelihood of, of you defaulting, right, on operating loan or real estate loan? And the, the problem today is, is this incomplete picture of risk. And primarily, how do I translate that risk into price between the farm and the farmer? And that's where AgriGraph comes in and, and is helping these organizations really put together this full story of you know, here's the historical production of that field. Because, you know, in our conversations, you know, with banks and insurers, this this topic comes up as this lack of transparency, right? It doesn't necessarily benefit the bank. They don't ask enough information, right? To say, you farm 8,000 acres, but they can't go out and walk 8,000 acres. And even if they did, they're bankers. They don't really know what they're looking at, right? And no offense to bankers. They say, we don't know. So, this is where Agrograph would come in and say, we can look at all those 8,000 acres and we can classify them for, you know, the top third in the county, right? Or the other 83rd producer, right? And here's what their historical productivity has been on that land. Here's the earning potential of that land. And it really helps the, this, you know, transparency that between the farm and, and, and the lender or the creditor or the insurer to really understand where do I base my pricing in a way that that's really fair and equitable. And that works for both parties. Because today, I think this lack of transparency works against against both parties. So, and how does that translate into to AgriRef and solutions? You know, our the way we package our data up is is I'd kind of put it in three broad categories. It's it's on the pricing side of risk of how do I better price uh, you know a parametric insurance product from a risk index standpoint, you know, if you're looking at, at hail, for instance, or again, an automated valuation model, or maybe even total production, right? So putting together risk products, and then also there's the credit score. And that's really an, an aggregation of all the data and information that we know about a particular parcel or even a farm, and rolling that up into a score uh, that we usually work with the client to go modify. You know, we have our own score, but then using their data, we, we put together this score complete uh, holistic picture. And the folks that work with AgriGraph primarily work with us on, on uh, you know, three or four ways here. They either pull our data directly with an API or they can go to our web portal, this, this agros.com. And if you're wondering, agros is Greek for field. 
So that's that, that platform. And then we also have built custom portals uh, where, you know, folks who don't have, you know, that capability uh, in-house, uh, we, we can host it uh, on our, our agrostepplant.com platform. So with that, I will move into the, the, the next section here in a case study. And what I'd like to do here is, is really focus on, on the ag lenders or, or the banking side of the industry and the types of work that Agrograph uh, is doing uh, for banks, both uh, uh, large uh, and small. And we'll focus on a handful of themes of, of where we're really, you know, helping these operations from a, from a, a scalability standpoint, a standardization standpoint, and an efficiency standpoint. And the way we break this value up is, is four, four buckets here. One is enhancing the credit module. And again, it's that assessment of, of, of credit worthiness at the bank or insurer. They all do it, but the, there's no standardization going from one bank to the other. Uh, they're, they're all different. Uh, so trying to create more standardization across the industry, you know, again, this FICO score of A. And then automating and speeding the loan process is another way that we provide value. This new area for us is sustainability uh, audits. And to say, you know, we're not trying to create the benchmark for sustainability, but helping those institutions better audit their, their, their own book of business and how those match up to the sustainability metrics that they wish to be measured against. And then the fourth is, you know, helping banks uh, market and prospect to new customers. Again, I like to think about it of, you know, what's, you know, my book versus my opportunity and how these banks can leverage and are leveraging our data to help them uh, make those decisions. So I'll use a couple of quotes here. I'm going to use Moody's Analytics because they had some really nice customer Quotes on their website, so a little social proof here. So, in terms of enhancing the credit module, you know they've they have right in their site here that this it's critical the credit determining the credit worthiness and then of course accuracy is essential and the timeliness of that how quickly they can determine that credit. Worthiness. Secondarily, there's also a, you know well known you know analyzing this borrower you know the farmer information to generate this credit score is a very manual on an error-prone process that can take days or weeks. Not to mention the process is different at every different bank. So again, how do we make this more standardized and efficient? So what an agrograph has provided is, is what we call these parcel reports. And again, you can click on any parcel, any field anywhere in the US. We do work internationally as well, but this particular parcel report is, is just limited uh, to the US. Our risk score is a global score. but where we pull up information about that parcel. So what's its, you know, how much a ground is tillable or woodland? What's the earning potential of that ground when it was corn and soybean? Again, that we look back over the last 10 years for that field, we could go back 30 if we need to. Based on the current price of corn, obviously pretty good now, you know, what's its earning potential? And then where does that particular parcel we use in this report the county average of you know this particular grower is an 83rd percentile. Again, we have our risk score in this report as well, uh, kind of aggregating all these 30 different factors that we know about this parcel into its earning potential and the risk of it earning its you know average annual yield. Can it do that? And, and our you know for this particular one, yeah, very good. And we also from a land appraisal side, um, we have our own agrofinance models calculating a cash rent for that field and also a fair market value where we look at, you know, actual sales prices and do some, you know, geospatial analysis to determine, you know, other similarly priced parcels in that area. So again, it's this fast automated reporting, but most importantly, we're using, you know, benchmarks that allow us to do this, you know, across the United States and do it instantly, right? You don't have to wait 90 days or three weeks to get a report. You can get it in three seconds. So the, the next area is, is automating and speeding the loan process. And again, I'm going to use another quote from Moody's here because I like it. You know, one of the borrower's biggest complaints with banks is the time it takes to get an answer, right? And it's known that these alternative lenders, and we could go through a list of who those are, really have capitalized on this dissatisfaction using you know new technology to, to improve the process, right? Maybe the Interest rate is a bit different, but again, that's kind of the, the give and take of, you know, if we can do it more quickly and, you know, if we could understand more of your, your operation, we could put an appropriate risk on. 
you know, knowing, knowing the risk that it takes. So what AgroGraph does is really help on a handful of things. One is kind of the pre, uh, you want to call it front loading, you know, that onboard and the client, you know, you know, pre-qualify them, you know, how many acres are they farming? What's their production history? What's their risk? And then once they're brought on, really helping to speed up that underwriting process, you know, from, you know, from weeks to days, right? And the onboarding, you know, from, you know, days to hours, right? And then throughout the growing season, again, taking a much more proactive stance rather than reactive stance, you know, AgriGraph can verify the crop that's planted with our crop ID map, and then, you know, follow that field throughout the growing season. So uh, that lender or insurer really knows uh, the status of that crop, you know, prior prior to the end of the season. So they're, they're more informed and particularly for ones that are doing more loan updates, uh, you can get that uh, more real time and understand whether you should be lending more money. Or the, the third here is this sustainability ratings. And I've got a different quote from a Midwest real estate investment trust. And this gentleman says that, you know, there is no standard uh, for sustainability ratings. And even if there is, and we use it, we don't even have the capability to audit and particularly audit in a cost efficient manner, right? So what AgriGraph has allowed is for us to go combine our data with the vendor to create this report where we can analyze their entire portfolio or, or their farm, and then combine that with the farmer provided data given to that organization. And they'll go create this, this, this automated audit report to hit those sustainability metrics that they're being measured against either for you know, shareholders, for investors, right? So how do we make that process simple and, and, and quick to generate? And then the, the last topic here was kind of this market issue with a portfolio planning and forecasting. So if you can look, you know, at, at, you know, you've got your book that you're managing, but how about your opportunity? What are the other, you know, farms in the area that you may want to take on? AgriGraph can help you know, put numbers to that, you know, what's, you know, given our, his, you know, historical data, you know, is it bottom ground? Is it high yielding ground? Is it, you know, been below the county average of the last eight out of 10 years, right? Maybe this is someone you don't want to take into your portfolio. So again, we allow those tools, again, uh, allow banks to go out and, and kind of, especially when they're in new territory, understand, you know, the, the risks that exist and, and bring on a book. Again, it's this adverse risk selection, um, how do you do that more efficiently and, and, and faster so you know you have less risk on your books or the risk that you're comfortable with is most important. So kind of wrapping up from you know the summary of opportunities for growth in, in the banking side, you know, AgriGraph really help on the augment and speed their credit services process. I think there's some known you know inefficiencies in the banking industry today that really limit growth. I particularly exacerbated on the, the more resource constrained, smaller, mid-sized banks. So how do they compete with the large you know, banking or, or, or non-traditional alternative financing? Well, it's going to be speed and, 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 and service and, and perhaps even more you know, aggressive rates, right? That, that match risk to price. And then the third is these new technologies exist out on the market uh, and are already being utilized, the challenging traditional lenders. So the industry is, is changing and, and moving. Uh, and it's a real opportunity here for folks to really embrace this and, and move on to this, this new phase of a more data-driven uh, risk-based uh, pricing, which is the future of, of agri-finance. So with that, I'll wrap up our official presentation here with our credit score of ag and kind of open it up to questions and comments. Hey, Jim, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Well, Jim, thank you so much for the, for the presentation today. Just to reiterate to our audience, you can ask a question by using the Q&A box um, found in the middle of your screen, or you can raise your hand and, and I'll unmute you to ask your question out loud. Most people choose the, the Q&A box. But while we're waiting for questions to roll, Jim, one thing I'm curious about is just about the data you guys are collecting. And you know, early on, you sort of differentiated yourself from a lot of the precision ag companies because your value prop is fundamentally is fundamentally different. But in terms of like the data you're, you're capturing, is it similar to what precision agriculture companies that are using satellite or UAV based imagery to do, you know, crop 
analytics type of work? And are you capturing some of that yourself? Are you partnering to collect data from others? How do you sort of think about that? Yeah, our, our, that's a good, good question there, David. So we utilize, uh, you know, our, our, we don't sell any satellite data, ironically, even though we use satellite data. And, and most of the time though we have, we don't sell our yield data because we do field level yield data. It's really aggregating that into these you know, index products that you know, once you know the crop that's planted and you know, and, and you can put yield around that, and then you can look at his, you know, satellite imagery to go back in time, we can kind of piece together that story. And, and for us, you know, satellite imagery has a lot of advantages, but I think you know, there's certain precision ag use cases that satellite just is not a good candidate for. You know, and you know various disease pressures. There's some disease ones it works quite well for, but you know, you sometimes want a more high resolution imagery to do precision ag work. So that's you know one of the areas where we don't we we just don't think satellite imagery has a, the most applicability for. Again, you know, satellite imagery works well when I could look at you know every field. I could look at 317 million acres of fields and do it every couple of days anywhere on the globe. That's powerful. But, you know, you can get down pretty accurate, you know, to about a quarter acre. But, I, you know, some of the precision ag satellites and, and other providers out there of imagery like Planet Labs can go down much higher resolution. And we've u- utilized that data before, but then we just, you know, work with the customer to put that cost in there if they're looking for that. Most of the time, they're not doing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, another thing I was, I was curious about was some of the... the discussion on both your website and the presentation around some of your sustainability initiatives or some of the ways in which you can help quantify that, measure that, turn that into an asset for, for farmers. On the, the carbon piece is one thing, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about, and one of the major challenges is still getting accurate measurements and estimations for, for soil carbon measurement and management on the farm. How do you guys think about that as you deliver products that may allow, you know, there may, there may be a piece of the puzzle in monetizing with some of the challenges that still exist on the measurement side? Yeah, we, we were you know, proud to just recently join the Decade of Ag as part of the U.S. Farmers, Ranchers in Action uh, Coalition. And again, with a you know, focus on what we do on the, on the agri-finance side, but also on the sustainability side. You know, on, on the soil carbon in those initiatives, I mean, we do work now with, you know, uh, you know, tillage, like tillage practices and cover crops and, you know, water use efficiency. Those, those are things that, you know, we, we provide today on the sustainability. But on the soil carbon, you know, I, I put my soil science hat on. I don't wear it a lot anymore, but as a soil scientist, you know, there's, there's some limited capacity of, of the ability to, to, to measure, you know, soil carbon remotely, right? And the way our approach is, is really a two-pronged approach, and we haven't rolled this out yet. We're actually in development. So looking at, you know, remote sense imagery from a, a you know, a biomass standpoint, and then combining that with, you know, data below ground. Because you have to have that benchmark to start with to understand where the soil is, how much active and passive carbon exists, and then translate that into, you know, what's the trend? Uh, are you accumulating carbon and decreasing carbon? I think the challenge for agriculture, anyone in this space knows that, you know, soil carbon is very ephemeral, right? The, the moment you, you, you plow up that field and the type of tillage you use, drip till, you know, chisel plow, what have you, it, you know, affects how much carbon you, you give off, right? Once you, once you turn that soil over. So there, there's some, I think, real challenges going back to the auditing side, if you're going to do that with accuracy, right? And, and, and we think we have some solutions on there for soil carbon trends, whether you're accumulating stasis or decreasing. But I think it's one of those, I think it's a challenge on the methodology. And there's some, I, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a tricky area now for folks playing and to, to, to do it well. So. Yep, yep. Jim, two questions there from the audience. So the first one here, have you approached any farm management platform companies, like for example, Conservus, Granular, Agrian, Agri- Agri- sorry, I think they mean Agrian. 
to discuss uh, potential integration of data provided by Agrograph with their cost return data compiled, assimilated, and reports generated? You know, we haven't. You know, we, we've really focused on the uh, more the, the the banks and the in, insurance side of the industry, and and less on the the on, on the services side. And I think we'd definitely be open to those conversations. You know, we've reached out to a couple. Uh, you know, looking at kind of some unique things that we do on you know field readiness uh, index and soil moisture side. But I think it'd be a conversation we we'd, we'd love to have. I mean, uh, and and kind of see if there's a you know, dare I say, corporate lingo synergy here. We could work together. You know, with you know, we're not really focused on precision ag, but maybe this data can help drive value add for their growers and, and their users. And I think we'd be, you know, more than happy to go go down that path. So, got it. And then the last question we have, Jim: What crops do you cover, and what's the resolution of the data? Yeah. So from a imagery resolution, we. You know, from a granular side, you know, we we summarize our data to the, the field level or parcel level, but we can go down as, as accurate as about a, a quarter of an acre. In terms of a crop, from a crop ID side, we, we I think identify around 17 or 18 different global crops. But from a yield prediction side, we've really focused on a, a handful of crops. And I think it'll be no surprise here, you know, obviously, you know, corn and soybean uh, and wheat and also uh, canola, rice, and cotton. And those are the primary, uh, you know, crops that, that you know, canola, rapeseed that, that we focus on. But we do a handful of other crops as well. But for us, you know, moving into, you know, uh, a new crop, you know, really is only a couple uh, months worth of work to kind of build that model up. So we're always expanding that list, particularly for some of our global folks on, on some new crop types. But most of the work, here in, in, in North America is, is focused on those, you know, those primarily grain crops or, or row crops, you want to think of it that way. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Well, uh, Jim, we always have to ask our, our speakers uh, one last, oh, listen, we might have one more from the audience. How many lending clients do you, do you currently have? Where are they located? And uh, how do you price your services? Well, let me answer the question on on the pricing side. You know, we we uh, you know we price our services you know various ways, primarily you know uh, based on their geography, right? You know, you're looking at you know every field in Illinois, or you know three fields in in one county or in whole county. So our, our pricing is is kind of broke down by by the geography and then the data of those of those users. What's the frequency? You know of data that you're pulling and the geography of the area that you're, you're pulling that in sort of more of an enterprise contract from a, you know, setup subscription and maintenance. In terms of lenders, you know, I'm not going to go into details of, of who's on, on, on our client lists uh, directly, but some of the largest ag lenders in, in, in the U S are, are folks that, that, that we're working with. Uh, but we're also, again, not just focused on, uh, the larger side also we're expanding into the small and the mid-sized banks and and crop insurers again our our real insurance side is is much more global than our banking side though we've done work internationally on banking most of our banking clients are here in north america so us and canada mexico but yeah got it well jim what can the audience do to help you out, help you out here, and, and how can they find you? Yeah, so I've got our contact information up here. Send us a note at, at infoandagraph.com. Of course, we're on social media and website, Twitter, Facebook. We have to have a chat on our website where you can say hello. You know, I think the biggest thing we, we've been, you know, we're, we're going to start a lot more outward bound marketing campaigns. I think a lot of folks don't know who we are and what we do. Some of that's been by design. Some of it's been by, you know, we, we've really focused on a handful of industries and we'd love to get our name out there more and talk about what we do and, and how we can collaborate with folks in the industry. You know, I, I think, you know, when I worked at the Weather Channel, we used to say that, you know, content is king, but distribution is King Kong. So I think, you know, working with, with folks in the industry and, and that, that partnership, if you want to use the Steve case and the, the, the third wave that, you know, 
it's 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 partnering with companies that are trying to grow with scale and, and accuracy and, and i think we can play a big part on that standardization of, of creditworthiness that really uh, can benefit both the the farm uh, and the lender or, or the creditor so that's i think helping is you know, getting the word out and and uh, you know, ha- happy to open up doors and let folks know what we do as as we get that word out as well and yeah i'm, I'm very uh, grateful for the opportunity to, to speak uh, with, with you, David, and with uh, with with the seminar series, I, a webinar. I've followed it for quite a while, so I'm glad to have the opportunity to partic- participate. Yeah, well, Jim, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be on this and really enjoy the discussion. Uh, I'd also like to thank the audience today for your active uh, participation and great questions. We host these agri-food conversations every Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. Central Time. If you'd like to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to Agri-Food Conversations. If you'd like to learn more, please join us next week as we host Carter Malloy, founder and CEO of Acre Trader, an exciting company that's making it easier for investors to access the farmland asset class. Um, thanks everyone for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, thanks.